Did you know that sowing hardy annuals in the autumn or fall if you're in America um, leads to stunning flowers earlier next year than if you plant them in spring and more robust plants that can fight pests and diseases so much better. And given that we've had a lot of those this year, then trying something that will help prevent that from happening is a win for me. In this video, I'm going to cover the five easiest to grow cut flower hardy annuals that you can sow now in autumn that will give you the best value in both blooms and profitability next spring. And that includes being able to make a bouquet arrangement or a market bouquet or however you want to term it that is coordinated and will be able to get going even if nothing else is flowering the garden. Hi, if we haven't met before, I'm Nicola from Bramble and Beyond and I like to grow cut flowers um, as efficiently, reading lazily, um, for profit if I can, um, obviously for my house, but I would like to make a little bit money on the side so that I can fund this colourful passion of mine. So if you're in the same boat, you're in the right place. If you're anything like me and you've got the seed catalogues out now, the hardy annuals choices are enormous and I can get sucked in quite easily on picking everything that I want to go. But I want to restrain myself and I want to just sow the plants that are going to be easy to grow, not require much attention during the winter months and will produce flowers quickly and easily next year. So there has to be two benefits. One, that they will, they're easy. And two, that it is beneficial in doing them now rather than leaving them to the spring to grow. So I am going to create a well curated list of flowers that you can grow that will create a beautiful bouquet that you can sell or take into the house next spring from just five flowers. So the first flower that I would recommend sowing is Cerinth Major. This is because this flower can serve as a foliage plant. It's got lovely bluey tinged leaves. It has a fairly insignificant flower head in purple flowers, um, but it's more, I grow it more for the foliage and it's just a little bit different. So if you want to add some, the base of your bouquet with a little bit of something different for foliage, then Cerinth Major is a good plant to have. The bonus is that these plants, if they can get flowered early, they will s produce seed eventually over the summer and they will produce their own little seedlings come the autumn. So next autumn, you have those perfect flowers in your garden, already self-sown, and you didn't need to bother with them next year, which to me, that's perfect, efficient gardening. <laughs> so Cerinth Major is number one on my list to sow. Number two is Ami Major. Um, this is a beautiful umbilifer. Um, so it is a disc shaped plant. So it is a filler, but it takes up a lot of space within an arrangement. And so it pads out <laughs> the arrangement. So it is helpful in making your bouquets look more fuller with less stems. So adding value to your arrangement, if you were choosing to sell it. They are also much sought after by florists, albeit they are not a pricey stem but then they don't travel too well. So you should be able to sell some good stems to florists, local florists. So Ami Major is my second flower to have. So we're building up this bouquet here. We've got foliage. We have got a disc shaped filler. So the third one on my list is Scabiosa or Scabious. I'm not quite sure how you say it. it seems it's the same word, but lots of different ways of saying it. Anyway, they are a beautiful and prolific 
daisy-like flower. So they've only got a small head, but they are quite a full flower head. If you would just create an arrangement with just them, you will need a lot of stems in them. But to add in with everything else, it just adds a little extra into the arrangement. And they can come in a whole wealth of colours. So you can choose your colour palette and find a scabiosa variety that will meet your needs without having to grow everything. So Scabiosa, again, top of my list. They are brilliant. In fact, all of these so far are brilliant for pollinators. And because they, if you're sowing them now, they will be sown or flowering early in the season. That is fantastic for the bees. Um, so any flower that is going to be flowering early and letting those bees get their food early in the season is great news for our environment and creating sustainability in the garden. So Scabiosa is one of those plants that the bees adore. So you can see the bouquet that's been arranged now. We've got foliage, we've got a disc shaped, we've got a daisy shaped. Uh, the next on my list would be sweet peas. Sweet peas are really easy to grow. Um, or be, if you have mice, you might want to protect them a bit or grow them in the house to start with so that they, the mice don't eat the, the pea pod um, or the pea itself. Uh, so, but they are underrated, I think. They, are, they smell divine. So anybody getting an arrangement with um, sweet peas in will have their house smelling absolutely glorious. They come in so many colours. So again, if you've got your colour palette sorted out, you will find a sweet pea that would tone in with everything that you're creating in this arrangement. Um, they, even if they're not in flower, the tendrils, all of those lovely clinging vine type tendrils that grow, are another bit of foliage that you can add in and they just add an air of whimsical and wispiness to the arrangement. So it makes it look something different rather than a bog standard bouquet that you could be buying in Tesco's. So they add something special, um, even if they're not in flower, although they are much better in flower. Uh, most people pick their sweet peas as they flower, that's the recommendation. Obviously, otherwise they'll go to seed. But you can cut really deep into the plant so that you get a good stem length with a lot of the tendrils. And that really adds volume and interest to an arrangement rather than just picking the straight set stem and that's it. So having some of the foliage as well really adds to the arrangement. And my final flower to create a perfect bouquet in early summer next year is snapdragons. Snapdragons are fantastic flowers for adding drama and a spike to your arrangement. So really an arrangement we're looking at building is lots of different shapes, lots of different interest and the spike is the final element that you want to be adding in. Um, so depending on the variety, they may be bigger flowers or not. So I found this year um, the Madame Butterfly produced much more dramatic flowers than the Monarch. The Monarch is more dainty, whereas the Madame Butterfly are really big flowers um, that last a long time actually. Um, so and, and so look much more dramatic in an arrangement. And they could be your focal flower. So the, the Madame Butterfly series certainly could be a focal flower in your arrangement. So if nothing else is in flower, if your peonies haven't started, if your roses haven't started, which they, they're always a bit hit and miss as to when they're going to start flowering in the summer, then you could start arrangements just with these flowers themselves. This selection should make an arrangement on its own. 
but they are then added to with any perennials that you may have perennials or biennials that you may have ready to go so biennials sweet williams um wallflowers perfect um you may have your roses and peonies in flowers so they can all add in so this is your starting point for a wonderful arrangement that you can make next year and they're all easy to grow and the bonus with snapdragons is that they tend to get a little stuck they're really easy to germinate and then they just sit as really small seedlings for quite some time so if they're doing that over winter then what's not to, to love they can take their time and still be ready to get going in spring. It's always good to have some hardy annuals on the go over winter so that you have a, you're securing the knowledge that you've got some plants that you can potentially sell come early summer. So they're my top tips for easy hardy annual flowers to grow this autumn. Thanks for watching and I'd love to hear what seeds you sow now in autumn um, to get you ready for spring next year. And if you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell icon, all of that jazz <laughs> to help my little channel grow. Until next time, happy gardening.